Social Role Theory What is the Social Role Theory? Social roles are basic building blocks of social organization. Social roles are learned and enacted during childhood. They also originated as an effort to understand the causes of sex differences and similarities in social behavior. Family influence. One of my favorite references in regards to the social role theory is the Pride and the Prejudice. This story by Austin has classifications of social class and gender roles as a hierarchy set by society. Aside from the societal hierarchy that kept the roles going, the family structure did as well. Women were to keep home, take care of their kids, and men were to work, maintain a shelter, and if drafted, fight in wars. The first set of social roles begins typically at birth, and that starts with gender roles or sex roles. What families usually treat newborns differently according to their sex. Indeed, families began to socialize gender roles even in delivery rooms. Baby boys are dressed in blue. Um, some hospitals even offer um, the newborn caps with bowls on them for little girls. And some parents like to bring their own clothes, and they might bring a bow for a little girl, maybe a hat or a beanie for a boy. This can be true even down to how parents describe their children. Boys can be described as rough and playful and based on how they look. Girls are usually described as sweet, caring, affectionate, etc., etc. Men and women behave according to the stereotypes associated with the roles they occupy. When thinking about how children refer to themselves as boy and girl, it's easy to see how we act according to stereotypical social roles. The cultural explanation maintains that a permanent gender identity is established through the socialization processes people undergo in childhood. And I felt um, that I could relate to that sense because for example, when I was a young girl, I was not allowed to wander off by myself nor go too far down the street, and neither was my cousin. Like, there was an icy lady who lived around the corner from my grandmother's house, and we could not go there unless we had a male escort with us. Otherwise, we could not go. However, our cousin, he was a male, his name was Joseph. He was able to go around the corner all he wanted, go to his friend's house, go up or down the street, but it was also because, you know, he was less likely to probably get kidnapped than us as girls, how we defend ourselves. And that took place at a very young age, and we were in elementary school during that time. Gender roles and expectations. Gender roles derive from the specific family and employment roles commonly held by women versus men in society. Women are seen as more communal and men more agentic. And agentic is basically a goal, goal achievement and task function, functioning. Whereas communal is like the maintenance of relationships and social functioning, which is all the things that women tend to do. I like to think about Barbie versus Ninja Turtles. One do toy is designed to obviously be feminine and the other is inherently masculine. You think, you see Barbie, she has her pretty dresses, her heels, her hair is always done, her nails are always done. And then you have... Ninja Turtles who like to fight, they're rough. You think boys are rough. They like to, you know, fight and play around. Um, only in like a stereotypical sense of the gender roles. Um, for example, growing up, I've seen my grandparents and if my grandmother said, no, we could not eat this piece of candy or we were eating this for dinner and that was it, we could not go to my grandfather and if he says yes, then the mind has changed because my grandmother ran the household and my grandfather provided for it. So whatever her rules were, they went. However, does this pertain to all aspects of life? The social role perspective is more flexible than the cultural socialization perspective because it acknowledges that people occupy multiple roles and may change behaviors accordingly. The same can also be said in the workplace. And um, typically this is seen a lot when it comes to roles that men and women might share that put them in the same position. We'll see a little bit more of that later. 
Another theory is that male and female leaders should differ very little if they occupy the same leadership role. So if a, if a female is the president uh, or CEO of a company, and a male is the CEO of a company, then their duty should still be the same. However, sometimes that might not be true. Some clients still might prefer to have a man handle their cases versus a female because they feel like he might actually get it done and a female with her emotions might get in the way of that. And that's just nothing but stereotyping. However, the gender roles experienced in childhood may cause men and women to come to the workforce with different sets of skills and traits. So, that ingrained differences may cause men and women to behave differently despite structural forces towards similarity. So, in that same, in that same um, example, if uh, there was a female CEO and then another, another company had a male CEO, then all their traits and sets of skills should be the same. However, based on some of the gender roles that we've grown up with, as a female, if I were a female and I were if I were a CEO, I might feel a little bit more inclined to be more understanding and sympathetic instead of just these are the facts and this is how this is going to happen and that's it. Whereas a male might say be a little bit more cutthroat and say we're either going to go into business with you or we're not. There is no gray area. Understanding differential roles. In the workforce, most women who work are in different fields than men. Although social role theory treats these differing distributions of women and men into roles as their primary origin of sex-differentiated social behavior, their impact on behavior is mediated by psychological and social processes. Gender roles are more proximal causes of sex differences. As a parent, I might plan to gender roles with my children when it comes to toys or extracurricular activities. However, if my son decided that he wanted to be a gymnast, I would not stop him. If my daughter wants to play baseball, I say, well, you know, you can play softball. That is an alternative to playing baseball because baseball is a male sport, whereas softball is a female version of the sport. But that's because that's the option that she's given. I mean, I might want, I might favor playing Barbies with my daughter, whereas I won't. I might not favor playing Barbies with my son. However, funny thing is, when my brother and I were young, I used to play with my Barbies, and he would play with his action figures, and we play together with them, and in a game that we used to call People, and we take them, and they go camping. He might borrow my Barbie mobile home, and I have my kid, my Barbie dolls living in a Barbie house, and they be friends. But while he'll be playing with his action figures and I play with my Barbies. I also think that the roles are a blueprint for certain situations, especially in religious cultures. However, once you're older, you choose what roles and beliefs to hold on to and what to let go of. And I feel like I've run into a lot of people who are, some religions are inherently strict on the roles that women play in the family and in the household. And some are a little bit more relaxed. However, I believe that as we get older, we come to the realization of who we are as individuals outside of religion, and we decide based off of that what we want to do and how we want to act and the roles that we want to play in our home lives, in our personal lives, and in our family lives. Modern day gender roles. Traditional gender roles link females with the caretaker roles and males with the breadwinner roles. And... I've seen that a lot, but I've also seen the dynamics change. How, how, like where it says, however, in recent studies, the extent to which traditional gender roles are seen as changing in modern society depends in part on the metrics considered. In the U.S., more women are becoming breadwinners, but in other countries, they're underrepresented. And that is true. A lot of women are choosing to work, maintain their independence, and be able to care for themselves. Not everyone wants to you know, just be a stay-at-home mom and not make any money and not have any say-so. And with the way rent is going and the market and everything is rising, you kind of need two incomes. However, there should also be a balance, I believe, that if, if I, as a woman, am having children and I want to at least raise them for the first year of my life, then 
then it should take for maybe I feel like my husband should take that slack up. Otherwise, if we're both going to be working and and raising kids, then it should be a team effort. Like, you know, you can't, you can't, I feel like sometimes a lot of this gets confused where in like in modern day, you have. You have men who want their women to work and take care of the kids and take care of the home. However, that's not fair because that's a lot of stress. Taking care of children, maintaining a home, cooking and cleaning, and that is a job within itself. And that is a stressful job. Let alone adding a full-time job on top of that, that is double the amount of stress. But if you mix a little bit of traditional... With some of the modern day, I feel like there might be a little bit more leeway that can help families and and parents when they're growing and expanding their families come to an agreement and figure out what roles that they're going to play in their individual homes and families. Gender identity involves much more than simply acquiring knowledge about one's own gender and about the other gender at an early age. Rather, from the social cognitive theory perspective, Gender identity is conceptualized as an ongoing process that may change across the lifespan and as societal views about gender change. And that's true because in a modern day family, that's a perfect example of societal views changing in reference to gender change. We have here a traditional family that consists of a husband, a wife, and their children, whether it's a boy and a girl, two boys and one girl. Either way it goes, that was always the perception of what a family is two members of the opposite sex getting married and having and creating offspring now you have you now you have other images of family whereas there might be a child and a child might have two moms or two dads and though they're still parents they're still taking care of their children and that's a that's a new type of family that's a lot of that's a family that we're seeing in a lot of different scenarios just out here in life and that doesn't mean that they're not a correct family because they are a family it's just as we get older and as times change our views of our roles in society changes as well as our view like how we view ourselves now I might see myself as a mom and a student and I identify as a woman but I also can identify as you know, I can be a little rough, and if I feel like my children are a danger, I will turn into the Terminator or a Credible Hulk and go out and save my children because why do I have to just sit back and be docile? I'm not a docile person. So as we get older and as times change, our roles in society might start to change. How we view ourselves will start to change. And just the same way as how we view ourselves, our views of family start to become different. We start to just see family as... A group of like-minded people or individuals, it might not always be blood, it might just be friends, and those friends might be considered your family. Family doesn't always have to mean related by blood or just a husband and wife who creates kids. Families come from all different sorts. It could be, I could be a mom of one and have adopted another child. That does not make us any less of a family than the next person. The end.